Shattered Dreams is a two-day school-based program that promotes responsible decision-making among teens who drive. The program, what we've done a little bit differently in the last several times that we've done it is we talk about not just drinking and getting behind the wheel, but if you're going to get in a car with someone, what is that driver like? What's their state like? So have they been drinking and then making those decisions about putting yourself in harm's way? I think Shattered Dreams is really impactful because it's not somebody else, it's not some after school special with actors or something. They know these people. They're in class with these people. So when they see their friends or people, just people that they know um, in this accident, it brings it home. That's what Shattered Dreams is about. I am most excited about just being a part of this. I, my good friends have been in it the past two years, and so this is like a dream of mine to follow in their footsteps and be a part of Shattered Dreams. I'm most excited about uh, making an impact on a lot of the students in the school um, and making sure everyone realizes how bad these kind of situations are. I'm most nervous about acting, definitely because I've never done any acting or anything like that, so I'm kind of worried about keeping composure and making sure I stay in character. I'm kind of iffy on dying because I know it'll, honestly, I know it'll take a toll on my dad, like, really hard. And so I'm kind of nervous. Oh, that's another thing I'm nervous about is how my dad will react to it. But I feel it'll, um, I feel like it'll make sense in the story. So, of course, I'm willing to do it. And um, I think, I think it'll really make it realistic. When Victoria first came to me and said that she wanted to be a part of the Shattered Dreams program for this year, really had mixed emotions because I thought, well, this is really going to affect the way her dad and I uh, will feel. It's going to be a very emotional experience, but yet I think that it shows a lot of leadership skills. I was very pleased when she made the decision to try to pursue uh, the whatever role she, she would get. It's gonna hurt so bad whenever you take it all off. Oh, yeah. oh no, it won't hurt me at all. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even be Chris, around. the makeup artist, was here, and so she started putting on gray on my face to whiten me out and then she started putting fake blood on me and then she put latex and I set my hair um, blood on my arms, charcoal all over me, baby powder in my hair. Um, pretty much you know I got here pretty early and they put all this on me. I watched some of the filming and uh, it just kind of made it seem more real like this is all like gonna be starting soon. Like I saw Victoria's family walking out and they were all sad and it was it was tough to watch and like to see them, to see their reactions and I like, I literally felt like I was the cause of this and so I felt the need to apologize, so I apologized multiple times. I don't feel like it hit me emotionally like it will the day of the crash. I know it was really hard for my family because this is whenever they were told that I was dead, but for me it wasn't that emotional because I knew, like because I had been through makeup for an hour and a half and um, I knew that there were cameras all around me and stuff, and it just, it, it wasn't that hard for me. It was interesting because it, during every scene my eyes were closed, so I had to imagine what was going on, and actually whenever they pu pulled me into the room for the first time, I didn't know what the room looked like. So I was like imagining all this stuff, and whenever I opened, opened my eyes it was nothing like what I had expected it to be. It was very difficult for her dad and brother and I especially when the doctor came in to tell us that she had passed. It was very, very emotional. Coming out here to the courthouse, I thought, oh my goodness, I hope it's not a, another real emotional day, but it probably will be, and I can get through it knowing that this is all acting and we're doing this for the benefit of others. Being in the courthouse 
is, I mean, it's weird because I'm sitting there and I'm going to have one of my best friends, like, going to jail for something that I made her do. This is all my fault, and I, I'm responsible for killing two people, and I'm sending my best friend to jail. Like, that's a lot to handle, and I'm not getting in any trouble. I'm just hurt pretty bad, so it's, it's just weird for me. I don't know, knowing that I'm about to be in a crash today, I mean, it's weird because I know I'm not going to die, but it's still like, I'm going to be seriously, seriously injured, and like my bones will be sticking out, and it'll just, it'll be weird for me because I'll be like, I won't feel pain, but I'll look like I have this massive injury. And I'm really nervous about it, too. I don't know how to act, don't know what I need to be doing, and I really, I'm really nervous about laughing. I'm scared, like, I'll laugh, because I'll, because I'm nervous. I'm a little nervous because I have no idea what it's going to be like. Um, some of the actors that were in it, they were talking, they're like, oh, well, I hope I don't mess up. You know, like, oh, I'm nervous, maybe, I hope I don't laugh, and so that makes me nervous because if they're not completely in character, and there's all those people watching, well, um, and we have to film, and then I don't want to, you know, it's just, there's so much at stake, and we only get one take. I'm excited. Um, uh, I'm a little worried I'm going to try to open my eyes, because I'm going to want to know what it looks like, but I know I can't. I'm sick. Oh, God, I'm freaking out right now. Why are you freaking out? I don't want to mess this up. I don't know if I'm going to do it right. Uh, I'm trying to get in the zone. I'm trying to get in the zone. Got it. I just want people to take it seriously. <laughs> the crash was really hard. It well, When I first got in there, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, but then I started crying, and it felt so real because I would look at and see Victoria and Chandler just like completely, they looked like they were knocked out, so it felt really real. And then as time went on, it got harder and harder to improvise things because I was trying to think of what someone would actually do in the situation. And so whenever I finally stopped crying and screaming, I was thinking, oh, nobody cries and screams for that long, I guess. And I was trying to just, like, um, justify my situation in my head and figure everything out. It was bizarre. Um, first of all, because I had my eyes closed the entire time and uh, tried really hard to not make my breathing visible at all. I could only go by what I was hearing and everything, and I, I had no idea how close the student body was to the actual scene and everything that was set up like afterwards they were like right there like right in my face and I, I had no idea there there was that much silence um, you know and you could just hear the occasional whispering or you know that you know from the people who were, who were there just watching you know I had a camera and was down shooting and there were points whenever I was in the car when the jaws of life were going and um, it, it gets real at that point. As much as you try to prepare for it, you'll never be prepared for what it actually is. We were downstairs uh, watching the crash, and then um, literally right after it was over, we brought all the cameras upstairs and just started transferring, and we had like six computers going with cameras transferring. It was one of the longest days of my life, I think you could say. You know, after it was done, being able to walk into the retreat and everybody turn and look and go, did y'all do it? Is it done? That was one of the best feelings, being able to say, yep, we're done. And At the retreat, oh my gosh, we all bawled our eyes out like little babies. Um, and we had amazing speakers. Um, so I know that at least the people that were involved in Shattered Dreams, it really affected all of us. At the end of the day, if just one life is saved from the hours and hours of hard work and, you know, volunteers and money and all of that, if just one life is changed because of it, it was all worth it in the end. We see teenagers come in 
that are involved in drunk driving accidents stuff like that and you know the bystanders you know it's a it's a difficult you know we see brothers sisters you know friends that come in and you know, you know they're shattered you know they're all you know falling on the floor crying upset and heartbroken I mean it's just one of those things that's very tragic it's very hard to deal with it's one of those things that takes a long time to get over and sometimes people don't I mean we see still today people who lost a family member five six years ago from an accident from alcohol or whatnot and um, they're here for depression still they're being treated they're you know suicidal so it's a big thing when we make choices, there's consequences for those choices. I think it's real good for especially the teens, but also the adults that are here. It, it's a ripple effect. It affects so many people, and that's why I think it's, it's imperative that we do these programs. I feel like Shattered Dreams is such a powerful program, just the way that it's written. It affects lives every time we do it. Every, every year that we host it, they're new kids and they're being impacted and they're asking, we're basically asking kids to stop and slow down and think about the decisions that they're making, either with drinking and getting behind a wheel or when they're getting in a car with someone, what has that driver been doing and in what state are they in? If we can just make kids pause, I really feel like the program has done its job.